Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to the United Stand. A bidder for Manchester United has pulled out and this is the Manchester United versus Sevilla preview. I love what Dylan says. Uh, he thinks I'm having a word with Adam. Uh, maybe I should, maybe I should. But anyway, we're live on the show tonight. I hope you're all doing really well. We've got lots to get into. We're going to be previewing the Sevilla game but also a bit of breaking news coming up about the sale. Thomas Siliakis, this was the guy, we actually had him on the channel. You know, he spoke about how he'd like to buy Manchester United and give it to the fans. He's been very vocal on Twitter. Twitter, Twitter, it's a new thing, Twitter. I, I tried it and it failed. Um, but um, yeah, he's he's spoken about the, the sale of Manchester United and how he's going to pull out because um, he doesn't feel that um, the Glazers are acting in a responsible way with the best interests of Manchester United at heart. Well, well done to him because we already knew that. But uh, there we go. So lots to get into on the show. I'll be talking about why I think we're going to dispatch Sevilla very easily as well. I'm not jinxing it. I think out of all the Spanish clubs we've played in Europe this season, these are the easiest. So we'll see what let's see what happens with that. But before we get into all that, my favourite, uh, well, I don't want to say my favourite, but I've just got one. They've just sent me one. So although I've got a real working one, I've just been sent a new one. And I, th I don't know why they've sent it me. But I could give it away. Um, I could wrap it up. I could give it to the wife. Manscaped, though. Um, Manscaped. We're sponsored by Manscaped. Get your lawnmower 4.0. Here's one I used earlier. Trim the grass to make the yard look bigger. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code United Stand. Or you can scan the QR code next to me um, right there. Um, fantastic. It's, it, it makes everything better and cleaner and better down there, basically. Adjustable length, electromagnetic uh, induction charge port, so you just pop it in, no wires, take it out. Waterproof, it's got a light on it. You can also get it as part of the performance package, which has the weed whacker in it, a travel bag, deodorants, boxer shorts. Fantastic products from manscaped.com. Check them out, but get 20% off and free worldwide, worldwide shipping with the link in the description or scan the QR code. Trim the grass to make the yard look bigger. Back of the net. David, welcome to the Members Club. Thank you very much. And thank you very much to Manscaped. I can't believe our fans want City to win the league, says Mohammed. If City win the league, not only will they, uh, they might win the treble. I don't, know, I don't know any Man United fan that wants Man City to, the win, the, to win the league. And if you do, you're a prat. Um, I, I, don't th I don't know how you can want somebody to... Um, equal our biggest achievement. Um, so I, I don't know what that's all about. I really, really don't. But what I do know what's all about is that Thomas Ziliakos, before we get into the preview for Sevilla, he's come out and tweeted in the last few minutes, I've declined. Well, it actually gave a warning last night. He tweeted this last night. Media claims that the Glazers are preparing to invite a third round of bids. For the sake of United, let's hope it's not true. There are three serious bidders. Negotiate with them face to face until a deal is reached. This has been going on too long already. That was last night. Today, in the last few minutes, I've declined participation in the third bidding round for United. The bidding is turning into a farce, with the Glazers giving no respect to the club. The delays will make it very difficult for any new owner to build a winning team for next season. Jim Radcliffe, Sheikh Jazim and myself all were ready to negotiate a deal to buy Manchester United. Instead, the Glazers chose to start a new round. I will not participate in a farce set up to maximise the profit for the sellers at the expense of Manchester United. Now, part of me does wonder if that's his real Twitter account. I don't know. I, I really don't know. But um, the reality is, if it is, um, it's um, it's interesting, isn't it? A lot of people felt that that bid was a bit of PR anyway. But, um, look, I don't think it's far from the truth, whoever's behind it. Mark, I can't speak about Adam and Kev, says Adam. I can't speak... Um, but look, he's he's not wrong, as a lot of people in the chat are saying, if that is genuinely the case. Um, but I think from a from a sale point of view, you would be very, very annoyed if you were um, in this process because you are just being tr treated like idiots, really. Um, you know, as, as Ziliakos has allegedly said or, or tweeted, um, there's three bidders there ready to negotiate. You don't need to keep going through these bidding processes where you're just telling everybody to bid blind. Negotiate with them. And he's right. And the reason he's frustrated is because you're being asked to bid again blindly. What he is, what Thomas Siliakos is saying is there's three responsible bids there. Speak to us individually and, and, and actually negotiate properly. 
we're negotiating blind here, just being asked to put bids in for something, when actually it's a, it's a large amount of money, let's actually have a conversation. Um, so very, very interesting in relation to that and, and how that's going to pan out. And of course, we, we did have a little bit of an update from Mike Keegan in the Daily Mail. He's been very good around the sale. Uh, he put a bit of an update out a few hours ago. He said Manchester United's summer activity is clouded by the takeover situation. Eric Ten Hag does want Jude Bellingham, but the race against time to get deal done for window opening and City and Real Madrid are way out in front. Sale process would need to speed up rap rapidly post April the 28th. This Bellingham story, if I'm proved wrong, everybody wins, but this Bellingham story is complete and utter nonsense. And I know a lot of journalists have written about it and they will, you know, they'll, they've probably got good sources on it, but they might want to look at that source and see what, what's behind it because ultimately this doesn't even make any sense. We said it this morning, Jude Bellingham, we couldn't win that race even if we were in it because you're against Man City and Real Madrid. People think Richard Arnold and John Murta are going to beat Real Madrid and Man City to a transfer. Are you having a laugh? But also, we haven't even got the bloody money to do it. And also, we don't even know who's going to own the club in the summer. I, 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 I just think anybody hyping up the Bellingham deal is a fool or they're doing it for sinister reasons because... It's just not going to happen. And yeah, I completely agree that Eric Ten Hag wants Jude Bellingham. I want Jude Bellingham. But you know what? There's a lot of things I want I won't get. And I think Jude, I, th I think Eric Ten Hag's the same. You know, he's not going to get it because we're not in that situation. Um, Mark, did you hear that Old Trafford has not been nominated for the 2028 Euro bid due to it not being considered uh, a state of uh, the art stadium, says Alexander. And wow, I feel I've been watching Mark for a long time, says Alkin. Thank you very much. Welcome to the members club. Paul Woolley's just gifted five memberships as well. You're an absolute legend, Paul. Not the first time he's done that. Well done if you've got one. Uh, appreciate that. It's smoke and mirrors, says Tim. And before we get into the Sevilla preview, let me just come back to that comment about the old Trafford uh, scenario, which was mentioned by Alexander. So the stadiums for that have been put forward for Euro 28 bid um, from the UK, I think it is, and Ireland, um, Old Trafford has missed out. Now, the, this is embarrassing, very embarrassing. Um, I think Tottenham Stadium, the Etihad, uh, Welsh Stadium, they've all been put forward. Manchester United is the biggest club ground in England. It's got the biggest capacity, 75,000. No, no, no other club's got the same capacity or anywhere near what we've got and we're not being used for Euro 28. Do you know why? Because we're old and decrepit. Uh, it's been allowed to rust over the last 18 years. It's bloody embarrassing. It doesn't really bother me. I couldn't give a toss if, you know, Sweden are going to play Bulgaria at Old Trafford. But the reality is Old Trafford being the biggest capacity ground in the UK, not be sorry, in English football, club football, not being put forward is embarrassing. And the reason it's not being put forward is because the, the toilets are like a swimming pool full of piss. The roof leaks... The paint you could, you know, is second down from B&Q. It's rusting. It's basically like a, like a flower, a beautiful flower that's not been watered. And that's why. And ultimately, I couldn't give a shit about Euro 28. But what I do give a shit about is these agonisingly frustrating owners who are just destroying this football club. Um, Rimbic says, did you happen to see what ESPN pundits Richard Keyes disrespecting Eric Ten Hag told him to go back to Holland if he can't handle the EPL schedule, says Rimbic. Yeah, but Richard Keyes... Is in, is, I don't know where he is. He's somewhere in the Middle East with his hairy hands because he's been kicked out because he, he said inappropriate things about women. So, you know, I really would not lose any sleep if I was Eric Ten Hag about Richard Keyes having a pop at me. Um, you know, he's, um, he's an irrelevance. Him and Andy Gray used to be on the telly when bloody Dad's Army was on years ago. They're not relevant. They're just trying to be relevant. And how do you try to be relevant? You say controversial things. Um... You know, it'll be on about bloody vaccines and stuff and Brexit soon. Evening, Mark. Do you see the Mane Sane incident? They apparently punched one another in the face after the City game. Yannick, I don't know what's going on here, but the super chats are fantastic. We're trying to get onto the severe preview and we're getting good questions. Yeah, apparently Mane lamped Sane after last night. It feels like the Calibu, Calidu Cal, Cal, Koulibaly song. Calidu Koulibaly. Pockets Firmino and Mane. Could change it to Calidu Koulibaly. Punches, punches Sane and Mane. But no, Mane punched Sane. I think that's the right way around. Um, 
Shame they didn't show that amount of effort on the pitch. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Right, let's go to let's go to the uh, Sevilla preview because that's what we're here for, of course. But there's lots of news coming in tonight, and there's some good questions coming in, and we like that. We like the flow. Keep the flow going. Keep the questions coming in. Is Maguire in your starting lineup, Mark? Says Joshua Bowers. I tell you what, if you've not watched the press conference reaction today, if it's not your cup of tea, and you don't normally watch the press conference reaction. Anybody who did will tell you um, you've got to watch it. You've got to watch it. It was uh, it was sort of like a custard pie in my face live on air because I was mocking the question. I, I missed the press conference for the first time in weeks. I just had to go off the quotes. So I hadn't verbally, I hadn't audio heard it. I just read it. So somebody asked a question about Harry Maguire. I tweeted about it and I started on the show going mad about it. It was Adam. You've got to watch it. I found out on the show. People in the chat were telling me. Legends. Anyway, let's go. I don't know what. I, to this day, I don't. To this moment, I do not know what possessed him to ask that question. I really don't. Right, let's go to the Sevilla preview. Um, if you don't know who Sevilla are, they uh, play in Spain. Um, obviously, we, we played in Sevilla in the last round. And um, I think this is the... Who did we play in the last round? I've, I've had a complete brain, brain blank. Um... It wasn't cadets, was it? I've got a, what, what am I on about? Who did we play in the last round? Why can't I think of the name? Someone in the chat's going to tell me now. It wasn't. I've got cadets in my name. It wasn't them. It wasn't them. It wasn't. I can't speak. Real Betis. It was Real Betis. We've played Real Sociedad. We've played Real Betis. They're both better than Sevilla, in my opinion. Sevilla are a former big club. Um, you know, you look at some of their roster... I mean, people go on about Bono, the goalkeeper, the Moroccan goalkeeper. He's been on the bench the last few games. Um, Rakitic is there. He's well past it. I think Hazes Navas plays there still. Um, trying to think who else they've got. Um, I think bloody Lamella plays for them as well. So look, they're not. They're not. They sacked their manager. What was his name? Sam Sam Doria, Sam Pioli, or something like that. I know who he is. The bold one. Um, um, but. They sacked their manager in the international break. They're, they're just below mid-table. They're averaging, conceding in La Liga, one and a half goals a game. Um, they don't they don't play that well. They're the worst Spanish side we've been drawn. They have a fantastic UEFA Cup history, and you've got to be respectful, but that's pretty much... I mean, it's not our strongest team, but it's a very strong team that we can put out. Um, Scott McTominay's apparently out injured as well, which many would see as a boost. I'm joking. I'm joking. That would have got a laugh on the tour. Um, yeah, there's absolutely no way Harry Maguire should start this game because the team the team picks itself. Um, De Gea in goal. I'd go De Low because we want to go more attacking. Um, although Wan Bissaka has been fantastic. Um, uh, Varane and Martinez. Malasia plays at left back because Shaw is out. Midfield three has got to be Casemiro, Eriksen and Bruno. And then the front three has got to be Sancho, Anthony and Martial. And ultimately, I think that's a very strong side. It's not our strongest side because Rashford would start and Luke Shaw would start. And maybe some people quite rightly would put wan at right back. But that's a bloody strong... That's a bloody... That's a bloody strong team. I've played the game. That's a strong team, I'm telling you. There's no, there's no steady eddies in there. That's a strong team. I've played the game. That's a good team. At Old Trafford, no chance, Sevilla. No chance. I'm talking 22-0. You know, I, I'd be disappointed if it's not. So that is a fantastic Manchester United side to start. And it's probably the best side we've put out in weeks. Um, and that's no disrespect to Shaw or Rashford or anybody else. But that's probably the strongest side we can put out in a long time. And I think it beats Sevilla 2 or 3-0. And then you take it to Spain. You know, maybe put a bit of sun cream on. You know, Maybe have a sip of a sangria because it's easy street, you know. Nice little, nice little trip to Spain in, you know, mid-April. Have it. So um, I think it's, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, football in that never is straightforward. But um, as as far as previews go, I mean, they've got a new manager in. Um, I wrote his name down. I can't remember it. I think this is his biggest job he's ever had. Um, uh, Mendilibar. Um, he's won and he's won one and drawn one. Um, but I think it's a straightforward win. David says, I'm still crying at the presser reaction earlier, Mark. Adam needs a sabbatical. Yeah, you've got to watch it, haven't you, David? Uh, so glad Ericsson's back. I love him, says Matthias. Mark, I'm flying to Australia tomorrow, watching United stand at Heathrow. Wish me luck. Good to hear you prefer cats over dogs, by the way. Glazers out, says Matt. I don't prefer, I don't prefer cats over dogs. 
I don't know where that lies come from, but have a safe trip, mate. Uh, have a have a have a safe trip. Um, I don't think Ten Hag will start Ericsson, says SpongeBob. Well, technically, you and can I just say, haven't been wearing it for a while. It's back, it's back, and you know why it's back. I should have said that at the start. You know why it's back? Because he's back, Casemiro. Casemiro, he's back. So yes, um, back straight into the team. W makes a massive difference to the team, of course. Um, if you want to get one of these, by the way, United Stand Shopify links probably in the description as well. Um, we do shit worldwide. Would you say? And we do it in a yellow. I'm just not brave enough to wear it in yellow. I think we do it in green as well. So, would you sell or keep Martial if we bought in a new first choice number nine? Says Shane. I like Martial. For me, it's just about fitness. It's not about anything else. If Anthony Martial can stay fit, I think we'll be absolutely fine. But anyway, going back to the game very quickly, because I like to have a little bit of a tactical assessment. I see Man United with a lot of possession. I see us, um, you know, probably playing against the low block. Obviously, Spain's Spanish sides are very technical. They can certainly pass the ball about. But like most Spanish sides, they're toothless, you know. Unless you're playing Barcelona or Real Madrid, most Spanish sides are toothless. They can have possession. They won't create many chances. I fancy a clean sheet for De Gea again. And I fancy, you know, 2 0. I'd like to say 3 0. I'd love to say 4 0. And let's get it done because, um, you know, we've got Forrest at the weekend. Should be, a, should be a good three points. But it'd be nice to be able to be in the second half with 20 minutes to go and make some changes. Um, I wouldn't sell Martial if he can stay fit, is the, is the short answer, Shane. I think he's a, an important player for us. Um, but yeah, look, that team picks itself. McTominay um, has been reported by the Manchester Evening News that he's injured. Um, I mean, look, he, he's not going to. He was never going to start anyway. So uh, realistically, I, I I would rather Fred came off the bench anyway. So I'm not that bothered about McTominay being injured. Uh, hopefully, he'll be back soon. But with Casemiro and Eriksen back, we can afford to carry an injury in the midfield. If it had been last week, I'd have been a bit worried. But uh, look, on Ericsson, maybe Ericsson won't start. You could start Sabitzer. I think that's a great point. You could start Sabitzer in this game and it wouldn't matter massively. I think Sabitzer with Casemiro and Bruno, in many ways, I'd like to see it. But I think Ericsson will start. Um, if he doesn't, you, you can start Sabitzer for his fourth game in a row. And we were talking about that at lunchtime. The future of Sabitzer has to be... Um, He's got to start getting in the first team. So maybe maybe tomorrow would be an opportunity for him. But that's how I'd line up. Smash a like if you like that team. I think it's a very strong team. And I think if we can get that team out a lot over the next few weeks, the absence of Rashford won't be as big as it feels at the moment because he's a major loss. And, and when you look at it, we're missing Rashford and Luke Shaw and you can still put a team out like that. And Luke Shaw is massively important to us. The big thing for me is... Um, the big thing for me is he goes like that. Um... Hi, Mark. Which loan he should return? Move on, says Ben. I'll talk about that in a minute, Ben. Um, I, I do want to just sort of hit the nail on the head. I was sort of keeping it back for this show specifically because it's the first game without Rashford. Obviously, Ricky was on the tour with us in Dublin and we had a few beers afterwards and we were talking about Rashford and he was saying, look, I just don't think he's as good as everyone else thinks. He's a good player, but he's not a world-class player. And he did say, I genuinely think if Rashford got injured and we could play a front three of Sancho, Martial and Anthony, would be fine because he likes those three players. Well, now is the time where Ricky's going to get proved right or wrong. Um, <clears throat> for me, Rashford gets into Man United's team every single time. But players do get injured. So it's going to be really interesting to see how we cope without Rashford because Rashford scored some big goals for us this season, especially in Europe. So can United do, be, be decent without Marcus Rashford? And I don't think Ricky's right on this. I think we can be decent without him, but I still think he's a fantastic player that we'll really miss. I hope we can cope without him, but... Even if we go and win 4 0 tomorrow night, 4 0 at the week, you know, even if we win every game 4 0 without Rashford, it might be that we work better as a team without Rashford, but it doesn't mean that we're better without Rashford, even though that sounds completely wrong. Have you heard any injury updates on Ganacho, says Stephen? Uh, and Jay Martin welcomes the members club. Thank you very much. I have heard uh, an update on uh, Ganacho. Um, look, it, it's only rumour, but I heard two to three weeks. So I think that um, Ganacho could be back very, very soon for Manchester United, which of course. Would be uh, would be fantastic. Um, of course it would. Um, D says I think Sabitzer will start. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go two 0 to Manchester United. But I have a funny feeling if I was being a little bit braver that we might win three or four nil uh, and put the game to bed. Um, I think Ten Hag will want to do that. Home crowd, chance of the semi final. Um, 
yeah, I think it's a real big opportunity. In fact, you know what? Even though Manchester United are in the Euro Europa League, my arrogance for the Champions League comes rising to the surface because I can't remember who we play in the semi-final. I know Roma are on the other side, but who do we play in the semi-final if we get through? Do you think Rashford's better than Saka? Says um, Eid, 46. Um, PSV and Fenerbahce should have knocked Sevilla out already, says Alan Kenny. Um, do I think Rashford's better than Saka? I, I don't really get involved in the conversation because I, I, you can play you can play both. One plays off the left, one plays off the right. So it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, Sporting or Juve in the semi-final? Oh, you know what? It's getting very interesting, isn't it? I mean, the cha I'm doing a Champions League watch along tonight for Real Madrid, Chelsea. I mean, please do tune in and we can carry on the conversation. And I enjoyed buying Man City last night, apart from the fact that Man City won. But... Um, even the Europa League is looking good, isn't it? But we should be getting through against Sevilla. I was never concerned. And and football has a funny way of biting you in the arse. But I really do think we got a good draw against Sevilla. I, I think this is reputational. Sevilla remind me a little bit of Man United the last 10 years. You know, teams pull Man United and go, oh, no, it's Man United. But it's not really Man United. We've not really been United for 10 years. And I think Sevilla, when we pulled them out, there was a lot of people online going, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, I can't believe it. We've got Sevilla. They've won, Euro they've won the Europa League, the UEFA Cup loads of times. But reputation, they're not that good. They're not good this year. They were almost in a relegation battle at one point. They're very much mid-table in a league that really isn't that good beyond Barcelona and Real Madrid. And we beat the best team in bloody La Liga by comfortably, I think. And, you know, it was a good couple of games, but we were the better side in both, um, in both legs. So, look, I'm not worried about Sevilla. Um, Ten Hag this season has single-handedly destroyed this myth that we don't do very well against Spanish teams because we've battered them all, haven't we? 3-0 um, United, Martial Brayson and Anthony Screamer, says Miguel. I think we can really get at them tomorrow. I think the crowd will have a massive part to play. I think Casemiro being back, Varane being back, will get up the pitch. Sancho and Anthony played really well at the weekend. Martial's got a point to prove. I mean, the only thing that concerns me is can Martial stay fit? Um, we need him to do something that he hasn't done this season. Scott Stevens says, Hello, Mark. We can't replace Rashford, but I believe it will be more flowing football because Rashford loves to take more shots instead of looking to pass. I think that's a great point by Scott. I mean, I wish everyone could sort of smash a like on Scott's comment or, or just smash a like on the video. I think he's absolutely spot on there. As somebody who is a big fan of Marcus Rashford, I can't lie that I'm quite excited to see how United play tomorrow. And I think it will be good for Marcus as well because Rashford's been brilliant for us this season. I've got no problem if somebody says Rashford should be player of the year. He's been magnificent for us this season. But I look at that game tomorrow and Jadon Sancho off the left is not somebody, if we go back here for a moment, you look at that team, Jadon Sancho is not the sort of player that's going to cut inside from 30 yards and shoot. Anthony does it a little bit, but not as much as Rashford. So, and neither's Martial. Those three players... Maybe Anthony does do it a bit, to be fair. But certainly Sancho and Martial, they're not going to get their head down and run at a defender. And they're not going to get their head down and shoot from 30 yards. And Eriksen's back. So, and Bruno's in there. So I think that if it works, and it's always a big if, because you can't start, you know, fantasising about something that's not happened. Well, you can, but you know what I mean. We don't know how it's going to work. But technically, I think I think you're right, Scott. I think that if this works, we'll be a lot better on the eye in relation to passing and moving in the final third, which sometimes can be quite frustrating. Uh, Rory C says, Evening, Mark. Never mind the new Manscaped. We all want the used one. Oh, Rory. That's like people who buy celebrities' bath water or used tights, isn't it? Imagine if I sold you that. I wouldn't do it out of pure disgust. Um... Uh, Stephen says it's similar to how Man City seems to change their play without Haaland could playing without Rashford force United to be more fluid in their build up play well as I said there Stephen I, I don't know we might we might be worse without Rashford we might be more creative without Rashford but either way I think it benefits Manchester United if we miss Rashford we all know we miss Rashford I think we will miss him but if we play better football in the final third without him Marcus will be watching and probably think hmm maybe I do need to pass and move a little bit more um which can only benefit us anyway so yeah i'm not i'm not too I, i'm quite i'm excited about the game tomorrow um contextually how good is Sevilla? 
I mean, I think it's a little bit pl like playing someone like Aston Villa. You know, I think Aston Villa would probably beat Sevilla at the moment. I think they would, especially because of um, Emery's knowledge of La Liga. But, you know, I'm not saying that Sevilla are like playing Cardiff. You know, I'm not saying that. I think Sevilla as a Premier League club, and obviously there's nobody really in the Premier League that probably plays like them, but I'd put them around a mid-table Premier League club, maybe a little bit lower than that, actually. So, you know, that's the sort of game that we're getting. It's, it's a bit like playing Everton at home, actually. A bit like playing Everton at home. And I, I think we'll beat them. Um, and I think we'll beat them comfortably. And that'll be quite nice just to go away next week. And maybe maybe, maybe next week you, you can. Um, look, if we win 3 or 4 nil, you can play Maguire next week and rest Varane for the Brighton game, which is on the Sunday. So this is how Eric Ten Hag's mind will work. He'll be thinking, you know what? If we can win, if we really go full pelt tomorrow night... Next week, I can rest a couple of players with the big game against Brighton on the Sunday coming up. Because, of course, Brighton have got the week off. They'll be Wembley looking, for it, looking forward to it all week. And we might be quite tired. Spain on Sunday night and then Wembley on Sunday afternoon. It's not easy. It's not easy, bruv. And, um, you know, we've been caught out by that a couple of times. I mean, we did all right when it was Newcastle in the final, didn't we? But... Uh, um, Wales says pay, play Lindelof. Big shout out to some of the members in the chat. I can see we've got Kenny, Ackerman and Rich there. Uh, he's saying Betis. He's way behind. Way behind. Um, do you think Tellez will play against us considering that Calantello played against City? Says Aviator. Um, I don't know whether he can or he can't, but to be honest, I'm not really scared if he does. I know that sounds... Like, I'm not scared of... I'm not I'm not scared of him, really. I, I mean, he's an OK left-back that's not good enough to play in the Premier League. I'm not, I'm not worried. Um, that, 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 doesn't fuss, that doesn't bother me at all, I think. You know, sometimes I think you get a bit overconfident. You don't want to come across too arrogant, but Sevilla are not as good as Barcelona and they're not as good as Real Betis. And we've knocked both of them out. So... Why should we, we, we why should we be concerned? I think it's a, a straightforward win for Manchester United tomorrow. And I think that um, Noob says that he can play tomorrow. Uh, as I say, it's not just about winning tomorrow. Well, it is. You know, any win's a good win. But it would be nice, as I say, to have a really high tempo from the start. European nights at Old Trafford, crowds up for it. And we go and demolish them in the first leg. And then the second leg, you know, you're sort of you just got to see it out for an hour just to make sure there's no chance of a major comeback. And then you're thinking about Brighton at Wembley on the Sunday. So, yeah, I'm all for it. Glazers out, says Graham Farrell. Great, great comment. Can't wait to see Casemiro tomorrow, says Jack. I'm not Casemiro. I'm just wearing a Casemiro jumper, by the way. Let's just have a quick look and see if there's anything uh, coming in in the last uh, since we've been on air. Um, Casemiro's agent has said that Casemiro has signed for four years plus one option of another year. He's come to win titles. This month has been hard, but there's nothing else on his mind. Yeah, it's great to have him back. Taking football away from Casemiro is like taking food from his table. It's like he can't live. He can't breathe. He wakes up thinking about football and goes to bed thinking about football. He'll be hungry to come back and we need to look after him. As I said this morning, neither of those cards were red cards. I've seen loads of tackles and people grabbing people's necks, which they um, haven't um, done anything about. Um... So I, I, I'm focused on this and I'm 100% sure that, um, you know, Casemiro has been targeted a little bit and uh, we need to call it out if it happens again. Would you rather United win the Europa League or the FA Cup? Oh, it's got to be the FA Cup, Brazza. You know, you've got to stop the treble if you can. The, normally I'd say the Europa League and I think I have said the Europa League, but where we are at the moment, the FA Cup is more important to me. As long as we get top four, which I think we will do, I'd rather win the FA Cup than the Europa League because I don't want Man City to win the treble. Simple as that. That's more important to me. I think everybody would agree with that. Um, and they'd be right too. Anyway, I'm going to be live on That's Football in 10 minutes for Real Madrid against Chelsea. Really looking forward to that. Um, we, might get a, we might get a couple of shocks tonight. Milan against Napoli. And uh, we might not. Um, we might see Chelsea get something against Madrid. Well, very interesting game. Uh, Pogba says McTominay sat you down at the weekend. He's actually quite good. Wake up and smell the coffee. He's injured, mate. 
so your hype train has hit the buffers. And Alex says, Evening Mark, just a list of players to keep sell on loan. Twansebi, Chong, Mejbri, Ahmad, Shoretire, Hendo, Savage, Bailey, Tellez, McNeil. I think to answer the previous question, Alex, about what loanees I would keep, I think Ahmad's the one that jumps out that we've got to give a game to uh, next season. Um is probably going to have to go on loan, but I want him to go on loan in England. I don't. I think if you loan somebody abroad, what's the bloody point? We want them to play in England, so get them a, get them a loan move in England. And I think Pellistri should be going on loan to a Premier League club. Um, I don't think Ethan Laird, Mejbri, to me, I've got a funny feeling they're not going to make it, but I'd love to get proved wrong. Um, thanks everyone for watching. I will see you over on That's Football in a few minutes' time. Um, Make sure you smash a like on the video, etc. And uh, enjoyed the show tonight. Really good.